This video is all about the ignition system on the Mercedes R107. Now this particular car here we bought just over a year ago on eBay as a painted shell with a box of bits. Transpired that very few of the bits were correct for the car and those that were correct needed full refurbishment. So it's taken us a year to get this far to the engine bay. Now before I bought this car, I was actually sent a video of the car running and quite how they managed to get this car running is another question because if you look down there there is a mishmash of relays ballast resistors connectors and wires none of which are correct for this car or oem so i'm going to have to start from scratch in this video or series of videos i'm going to go over the ignition coil the correct one for the car what happens if your ignition coil fails how to test it what happens if you've got the wrong ignition coil I'm going to talk about the ballast resistors, the importance of making sure you've got the right ones and changing them every so often. And we're going to start off by talking about the elephant in the room, which is the ignition control module, which I can see is completely missing from this car, which is presumably why they've hooked up all these relays here. Presumably that is how they got the car started. The ignition modules on these early 107 SLs are extremely expensive, four to five hundred pounds. If you can still get hold of one, um, and they changed over the years. And the early cars, they were located through this hole here on the underside of the car in a metal case and held on with four nuts with a cable coming through here and on the later cars it'll be a silver box the same size but different number of wires and connections would be mounted on the inner fender there now just before i whip over to the parts car and start removing the um ignition control module i notice that there are quite a few grommets missing on this car many of which we already have and you definitely don't want to be missing grommets or have leaking grommets in this section of the car if you've got a ignition control module in the vicinity because this area of the car is very prone to leaking. This drain hole here often um, fills up with water and then you'll get water leaking into your ignition control module. So it's worth checking that that drain hole there is actually clear. And as I say, in our case, this car has been painted and had new inner wings, etc. So those grommets will have all been chucked away a long time ago. And that hole there is for the ignition control module wire. And there should be an oblong grommet in there, which I'll have to get from the same 450 SL parts car is an early d -Dectronic model and it'll have the same ignition control unit on it that this car here should have. So we're gonna have an attempt to take that out. The ignition switch lives underneath the car and is held on by four nuts. Now on this um, rusty parts car here, I don't know how well you can see that, but the nuts are so rusted that we managed to get one out of four off and the others we're gonna to have to try and use one of these special fluted bits. We're going to have a go at cutting out this little bolt here. Um, it's completely rusted, there's not much left of it, so we're just using this Dremel tool here on a flexible shaft to help us get in there. The way that um, control, ignition control module comes out, you have to undo the wires here and then pull them through. Just before you remove this, just make a note that the wiring is held on by these clips that run along the side here. There should be two of them. This one here is a little bit corroded and the distributor wire runs in the bottom of that and this sits on top of it. I hate breaking things when taking them apart but this um, connector plate here just disintegrated when we took it apart. Um, so we should at least be able to get these wires undone now. This other one slightly trickier to get into but I think we've just about got it. It looks like some of these wires have broken off unfortunately. That one there, I don't know what was in there before. Just gonna help guide those wires through so they don't snag on any of the rusty edges. This is the control module here. It's got four wires coming out of it. A black, what looks to be a red, a green, possibly a green black and a brown. There is a whole variety of these um, ignition control modules depending on which car you've got. And there's numbers stamped here. This one is a Bosch 0227. I think that's 051017. 
we're going to have a go at getting this metal case off the ignition control switch and we've heated that nut up there using our new best friend the magnetic induction torch i can't really use a blow torch on that unit because of all the wires and the sensitive electronics so hopefully we're now going to be able to get a set of more grips on there and get that off that uh, induction torch is an incredible bit of kit and really useful for loosening nuts in places where you can't use a torch got one of those out with the induction torch we're going to heat the second one so this induction coil you don't touch the metal unless you've got shaky hands like me and what ever's in the center of it you can heat to red hot within seconds a little bit of perseverance and some penetrating oil i think we're going to get three out of four really struggling to get this last screw out and I think what I'll do is I'll bend the edges of this we've got three of them out bend the edges of this up so I can just twist the whole thing it could be that this is so rotten that we're gonna to have to make another one anyway bent the sides down like that I should be able to just screw this off now we've got cleaning these two up we've done so much rust removal that all of our wire wheels are worn out so we've just got some new ones here ignition control module looks a whole lot better now ideally I'd like to get these screws out but I would imagine the chance of those screws coming out after 50 years be pretty slim. We could send this off to get shot blasted and powder coated, but I think we're just going to make one up. How hard can that possibly be? Cut out the basic shape here, just using our angle grinder with a 0.7 thickness and metal cutting blade in there. Now we just need to do the bends, one, two, three, four, drill some holes and then glue in some bolts. We'll bend this lift here over. Just using the sharp edge of this I-beam here, clamped in two places, and we should just be able to tap that gently, like so. We're going to do this bend here, and I'm hoping that this piece here will just tuck underneath the I-beam as we tap it down. So far, so good. Just got to bend this piece down, bend that, and then draw some holes in there. Looking good. What we need to do now is line the holes. Four holes here that line up with that, so we'll stick this under the car with a magnet and then just trace around those holes. We're just gonna tap some threads in there, M61 tap, and then pop in four bolts and that will almost be ready to go on the car. Next, we've gotta lay in the ignition module in here when this is actually attached to the car and just mark the four holes. I'm under the car and thankfully all of our holes line up. We're just gonna attach the ignition module now and line that up and then drill the four holes that attach the ignition module to this case here. Just using this spring-loaded hole punch to get those holes exactly centered. And that should be us we done. Some stainless steel fittings from Aku yesterday, and that should allow us to replace all of these screws, nuts and bolts with stainless steel nuts and bolts so they won't rust in the future. All those four holes are drilled. We've just got one last hole to drill here, which is presumably just a ventilation hole. We've finished making up the protective box for the ignition control module. If you do ever attempt to make one of these yourself, there's a couple of things to um, point out. A, that this is not symmetrical. These holes here are further apart than these two bolts here. That's the first point. And secondly, that this wire here is not in the center of the control module either. So you do have to copy a template to actually make one that's going to fit. Go over that with some of the Eastwood rust encapsulator, matte silver, that's what we happen to have. And then we'll go over that later with a bit of chassis black. Encapsulator is dried. We're just going over it with extreme chassis black now. Finished painting that. The paint's now dry. It looks a million times better than the rusty thing we took off the parts car. Just got to screw that to there, attach that to the car, hook up all the wiring, and see if she runs. It's arrived in the post is what I hope is the screws we need to finish this job. These are the electrical screws for the ballast resistors that we will be replacing. These are the screws that hold the ballast resistors on to the um, chassis of the car and also that little connector. These are the four screws that hold the ignition module onto that plate we've just made up and these are the spring washers for the electrical connections. These fittings are stainless steel because you can see just how rusty these other ones become in that part of the car. Also just arrived in the post is a package from Parts in Motion. They sell stuff on eBay and in my experience they're the cheapest company for good quality components. These are the new ballast resistors that will be fitting to the project car. 
And when you buy these ballast resistors, they don't come with the um, screws or the washers. Now you could, of course, use the ones from the car that you've got on your car, but these are completely rusted and the um, spring washers are actually snapped in half. So just for the sake of a few pence, my advice would be to replace them with stainless steel fittings. These connections here at the ballast resistors and also on the coil and on the little um, con connector below the ballast resistors are one of the main reasons why you have problems with your car because they get rusty and they become intermittent and start to build up resistance. So it is worth replacing those fittings and in my advice it'd be worth replacing the ballast resistors if you haven't done so for a while. Just before we install the um, ignition control module it's really important that you check that this um, drain hole here is not plugged up because I went to see a car the other day and the ignition control module was actually lying in here as opposed to being attached under the car and this was full of water and you can imagine that if that gets blocked up and water gets to these little screw holes here or even this hole here that you will start to potentially risk run the risk of getting water into the ignition control module and that is an expensive thing to fix so just make sure that that drain hole there is completely free well we got the ignition control module in without any problems we're just waiting on a couple of clips that will clip that wire to this side here and one of these from mercedes they should arrive tomorrow but i think the time has come to rip out this mish mash of wiring put in the correct ballast resistors the correct coil in my experience these older style ignition coils don't tend to go wrong very often it's quite uh, common to have these still working after 40 50 years the coils should be color co coordinated especially the bosch ones and on this particular mercedes the early 107 it should be a blue ignition coil so i can tell instantly that this is the wrong coil for the car and we're just going to use this cheap and cheerful voltmeter here to measure the resistance across the two terminals of this coil and that will be about 1.6 depending on how rusty your terminals are 1.7 or 1.6 you can see on there but you have to remember that on a cheap meter like this the leads themselves have internal resistance if you hold them together you'll see that they have a resistance of 0.6 and you have to take that 0.6 off the 1.6. So this um, coil here has a resistance of one ohm and we can verify that on a more expensive meter. This is the fluke meter here that we used for diagnosing the parasitic battery draw in our SL55. And you can see that reads one ohm. We are over at the parts car now and the ignition coil on this car is blue which is correct and we're going to measure the resistance across these two terminals and it should be much lower than one ohm. I think this should be about 0.4 ohms. You can see it is much much lower, 0.4 ohms, 0.3 ohms which is about correct for this coil. Let's remove this Bosch ignition coil here, it's not the right one for the car um, and just sand off a little bit of paint there just to make sure we get a good earth sand contact. A bit of paint off there and if I touch that and it beeps we know that's a good earth. Which it is. We'll just clean up some of this dust. Next now. up I'm just going to screw in the two ballast resistors then I'm going to attach that connector down here put the new ignition coil in and we're almost ready to hook things up. I didn't notice that this actually had a piece missing when I took it off so we'll get a new one of those but for the time being we're just going to attach that to the chassis with a couple of stainless steel screws. Have a go at refurbishing this ignition coil here. These are still available but this one works absolutely fine just need to take the rust off it possibly repaint it. Something better than it did I think we'll go over this with some rust encapsulator because some of this rust here is quite ingrained and we don't want to start sanding off the metal casing of the coil. Now I do actually have a spare blue coil from our 280SL up there. We changed it with an intermotor coil several years ago but there's actually nothing wrong with this one so um, what I may do is take the bracket off this one because the bracket on the other one is completely rusted and just change the fittings here with some nice stainless steel ones. Just pointing out the section from the service manual the external identification of blue paintwork. Now those um, coils are different from standard coils. They have different windings in them. If you are trying to diagnose the poor running, rich running or poor idle of an old 
SL with one of those transistorized ignitions, it's worth bearing in mind that the car we're looking at is the where the ignition module is in the wheelhouse. The ignition coil voltage is just 2.6 to 3.5 after the ballast existor, resistor. On later cars with the later style um, ignition modules, the voltages at the coils can be much, much higher. But 2.6 to 3.5 for an old style DJ electronic car is the correct voltage at the coil. The earth wire from the parts car, and that is going to connect there like so, and then onto one of those terminals, and the top one will connect to the coil. We've got the ignition control module connected up correctly. There's four wires out of it. The red wire goes to one side of the blue ballast resistor, the green wire to this connector block here and connects with all the other green wires, the brown wire to the other terminal on the connector block, which connects up to the um, coil up here and the black wire to this side of the silver ballast resistor. We can't quite test the car yet because they've made such a mishmash of the wiring here that we're going to have to cut these wires, solder on some correct size hoops. That needs a little hoop there and connects to this side of the blue ballast resistor. This green wire from the test probe here needs a hoop soldered onto it. Um, that thick green wire from the distributor has got a hoop on it but it's the wrong size and won't fit in this connector block. Once you've sorted out all of that wiring we're gonna whip over here and look at all the starter motor wiring because this car has got an automatic box on it now. It was originally a manual but the automatic will have a neutral safety switch um, and I'm not 100% convinced that that's working because these here should have 12 volts going to them when you crank the car and they have nothing going to them when you turn the key in the ignition. Um, so we're going to have to investigate that problem on in another video. I'm going to leave this video here. We're making good progress on this car. We've got the correct ignition module in there, the correct uh, coil on there, the correct ballast resistors. Everything's wired up correctly. I just need to tidy up some wiring and solder on some proper connector hoops. There's a few connections there with the wrong size hoops and some with the hoops missing altogether. Um, and then we need to investigate this random wire here, which I suspect is linked to the automatic neutral safety switch on this car. Um, so in the next video, we're going to be looking at the starter motor, making sure there's power to the starter motor, figuring out the neutral safety switch, whether that's all connected up correctly and possibly then turning the key and seeing what happens. We got our new ballast resistors on eBay from these car guys here, Car Parts in Motion. They're listed at £30.67 each, but in actual fact, they have a 7% discount offer on. So the two ballast resistors delivered cost £56.75. If you haven't changed your ballast resistors in 50 years or 40 years, however old your car is, it's a good idea to do so because these ballast resistors can be responsible for a rough idle, a hard cold start. They can even give you a random stall as well. So often those kind of problems are um, blamed on the condition, con the <laughs> ignition control module. But more often than not, it's the inputs into that ignition control module that are the problems. And these ballast resistors are often the issue. Bought these stainless steel fittings from Accu. I've mentioned that company before. The screws that hold the um, connector block to the inner fender, the screws that hold the ignition control ignition module to the metal plate we made up. Um, these are the little ballast screws and spring washers that you'll need and we need some more of these screws here for our lower valance when it comes back from the powder coaters. I've mentioned this company before, They've got just about everything you'll need for a restoration, especially if you're trying to replace things in good quality stainless steel. They're not necessarily the cheapest company I've ever come across, but for us, they work out perfect because they'll deliver any quantity the next day. So definitely worth checking out their website.